What is up guys? It's Gage again. Uh, on this video today, we're going to be going over the pit bikes. Uh, what, what's been done to one of them and what we're going to do to the other. Um, so I do own two XR fifties. I, I did have quite a few different bikes at one point, but I downsized, uh, whenever we were having the baby, but I decided to keep a few, uh, on paternity leave. I went a little crazy on one of the bikes and spent a little bit of money and built one the way I wanted to stripped it down to bare frame, built it up from there. So that's the one we're going to be looking at today. A little bit of talking on the other one, uh, the one that's for my wife. If we're going to keep it, if we're going to build it, what's going to happen? Uh, but let's just jump into the, the black one and get to it. So this is it here. It's a 2001 XR50 from Honda. Um, it's It's got pretty much everything's been touched and changed on it. So we'll start with the frame and move up from there. So starting here at the frame, I stripped it down to bare frame, took the motor out, took everything off of it, sanded the frame, prepped it, and painted it white. As you can see there, it's gloss white. And then ended up on the sticker, I ended up clear coating over it to keep it from peeling and coming off and also to help smooth that transfer because the paint's obviously thicker. So I went ahead and clear coated that decal. As you can see, it didn't turn out too bad. I mean, I, I dig it quite a bit. And uh, also painted the triple trees as well, the same white. Um, since we're up here, we'll go with over the forks. So these forks are, uh, they're from eBay. They're not oil filled. They are beefier, like pretty beefy compared to the stock XR50 forks. Um, I mean, I'm a 250 pound guy and these handle my weight pretty good. The springs are stiff. Um, like I said, they're not oil filled, so they don't feel like premium forks on a race bike. But for the $100 you pay, I can't complain. I have another set on my other bike that I've beaten the daylights out of and they're still holding up. No play in them at all. But the shafts are 27 millimeters now. And uh, they are basically identical to XR70 forks. But they're meant for an XR50 due to the brake cable bracket. Uh, if you guys know anything or if you follow any videos or any other dirt bike stuff you know that a common swap for xr50s is the xr70 front end and the swing arms for the rear but this one here was built for the xr50 because if you get xr70 ones you have to fab up a brake cable bracket because it mounts up here swings that brake cable out real far this one keeps it linear so it stays parallel with the fork makes the brake function very smooth and uh, retains the 12 millimeter axle. But so far, probably my favorite cheap forks for an XR if you plan on bashing and beat on them pretty hard. They hold up good. Um, haven't bottomed them out completely yet, but they've got some good travel on them. Um, moving up, we have the handlebars, which if you notice, those handlebars are full size inch and an eighth bar. They taper from seven eighths down to the inch and an eighth. They are the Pro Taper Adventure High Bars, the Evo Adventure Highs. Great bars, they feel great. They don't look out of place because you can trim them down. But uh, to mount them up, these are the stock XR70. Um, bar clamps and then i bought the tusk seven eighths to inch and an eighth billet uh one inch riser adapters works great um positioning is pretty spot on for my size i'm six two and i can function perfect on this bike messing around um so i'm pretty pleased with how it sits and uh moving from there we have a billet stem nut I mean, I went a little over the top with some billet stuff, but it, it makes the bike look good. 
And uh, as far as grips go, we did Renthal Kevlar, I think, the Kevlar grips with Pro Taper Donuts and some gold billet bar ends. And on the other side, BBR front brake lever, T-bolt billet throttle tube. And it's a full billet throttle tube, if you can see in there. Real smooth, functions great. Uh, does need, let's see, it does need the 90 degree cable. So it doesn't sweep down like that. Doesn't bother me, doesn't get in the way. Um, if you do go down, it hits the bar first. It never hits this cable unless you go into like a tree stump or anything like that. But for now it works, able to ride it and have fun, beat on it and go out there and hit some trails and <laughs> see what it can do. Uh, from there, we, we have the stock fuel tank with a billet BBR fuel cap. And if you ask me for $70, the quality of that cap and just the overall look it gives the bike is worth it. Some people might say it's overpriced, but I think it's worth it. Uh, moving from there, we did a BBR uh, tall seat. And if you are a big guy like I am, this seat is a game changer. I have ran Amazon specials. I've ran the Piranha seats, knockoff seats. None of them come near the quality and the comfort of this seat here. I mean, for instance, this is a piranha seat and it's it's stiff, you know, it's a tall seat, but if you notice, it's just flat all the way across and it sits below that fender. And you go to the BBR, it sits above the fender and it has a slope to it. So it's very comfortable to ride for a long period of time because me and my brother ride these for you know, 30 to 40 miles at a time. We just go out and have fun. And then once the back starts hurting, we just head on back. But that seat for the $80, it is well worth the money. And uh, the plastics we did, they are CRF 50 style plastics. Um, I don't know if I have, I don't. My stock XR Classics are up in the attic. But the CRF50 style, I mean, it's very easy to tell just the overall shape. It's not big, flat piece. It's got curves and dents. And down here, it's got those little 90s in there. Uh, it does make the fuel cutoff hard to get to, but it's, it's not hard at all. I mean, it's just a little bit of a pain compared to stock. You have to move the plastic out of the way. But other than that, pleased with them. Did the Monster Energy um, graphics across the whole bike. It came as a kit, plastics and graphics together. You just had to install the graphics. It turned out pretty good. I've put quite a few graphics kits on these bikes. The worst part is this here. This is the worst panel to wrap. Um, you're gonna get wrinkles unless you're a professional and know what you're doing. <laughs> you probably won't. But for, for most people, regardless, you're going to get a couple wrinkles. Doesn't look bad. It's a, it's a given. It's going to happen, I bet. But out of everything else, that's the worst. It's, everything else is smooth as butter to put on. Um, while we're on this side, we have a one-inch stainless exhaust. And that is from uh, TC Motor, I believe. And it's got like a Pro Circuit style muffler. The bike sounds great. This, I had a Sherco 4.5i 450 uh, Supermoto, and this exhaust sounds pretty close to that 450. It doesn't have the throatiness that the 450 does, because obviously it's a way bigger motor, but this exhaust sounds fantastic on this bike. I'll, I'll have to put in a clip. I think I have a few clips. Um, and then we did the 50 caliber swing arm in the rear. It is a powder coated, it's powder coated black on this bike, but it's all aluminum. Um, you do get, and it's pretty beefy. Uh, you do get the different stuff, like the proper, to me, the proper style axle adjusters for chain tension. I hate the stock XR50 ones, the eyelet with the double jam nut or whatever. I'm just not a fan of those. They're a pain to adjust. Uh, this one here, pretty simple. Just need a 14, a 13 millimeter wrench. 
easy to adjust along with you know the 14 and 17 millimeter for the axle but it does retain the stock 12 millimeter axle um, stock spacers so there's no need for you know any wider spacers it includes your brake rod um, extension I think it's a four inch extension and it also includes the um, all thread for this half and your spring you just got to cut about a half inch off of the spring and that's it uh, but overall these swing arms they're a two and a half inch uh, extension or two and a half inch uh, extended swing arm with a uh, one inch I think it's a one inch or inch and a half raise on them um, but they make the bike so much more stable for heavier riders like me uh, the bike at speeds is very nimble and feels great doesn't feel like it's going to lose control it's you can take corners pretty quick you can give it all the power you want it'll still wheelie with the motor we have on there but it's definitely worth the 180 dollars for this swing arm uh, you can't beat it and let's see from here we have the fast ace fully adjustable rear shock 250 pound spring rate and it is a nice shock when you adjust it on the adjusters you can feel the difference it is night and day so it's definitely a good shock to get i think it was like 110 dollars. i will link all link all the parts that i put on this bike down below um since it was a recent build i have everything still uh, in my history from the last four weeks that i built it uh let's see from there we have a pro taper uh hd gold 420 pitch chain with a faster minis uh 16 tooth front sprocket and we have a pro taper uh, black anodized 37 tooth rear sprocket that gearing for the motor that's on there is perfect doesn't need any more gearing out think. still gives you the torque and top speed uh, that you'd want to go on this bike um it's i think it'll run about 45 mile an hour but it'll still pull wheelies first and second gear no problem uh, we do have a uni filter crankcase vent and took the whole harness off clean this whole harness up you can't see but inside there you might be able to see it uh, is the t-bolt uh, cdi box that came with this t-bolt 88 cc big bore kit uh, it has the aluminum cylinder head has the aluminum valve head uh, with the bigger cooling fins and it's the race head with the race cam so it's a big valve race head um, i don't have a comparison between a non-race head should soon hopefully and that bike might do one so i should have a comparison see how that goes uh, we did do the t-bolt uh, billet dress up kit just to make it look good along with the factory racing side cover uh, that was an expense that didn't need to happen but i always wanted it might as well do it uh, we have a knockoff bbr skid plate uh, works great have them on all my bikes for the price can't beat it. it's like 25 bucks so you can't beat that at all uh, with that T-Bolt kit, you do get a Makuni 20mm uh, carb, you get piston, you get high volume oil pump, both heads, cam, intake, everything to put the kit on, including filter, uh, all for like $430. So that's pretty cheap for a 88cc kit, if you ask me, for the power that you get. Uh, from there, we have a super beefy uh, IMS shifter that shifter was 42 dollars it was worth the money the positioning of it the styling the uh, basically the build quality uh is to me unmatched you could lay this bike over and you're probably not gonna mess up this shifter at all um stock peg bar with a let's see I believe a half inch or a quarter inch spacer to space it down to clear this cover um some Amazon anodized foot pegs. They work good. I need to get the T-bolt peg bar on here, but spent too much money on it so far. Don't want to spend any more money on it for a while. Just want to enjoy it. Um, stock wheels, 
They will be getting gold wheels from Piranha with 2.75 uh, Michelin tires front and rear. But yeah, overall, that's about everything on the bike. It's a good little bike. If it wasn't so late, I'd fire it up. It's loud. I've I've had uh, one police officer tell me that it was a little too loud, but I think he was just having a bad day. So it's it's fun to ride. There'll be plenty of videos of it out on the street. We're gonna go have fun, hit some trails, just basically beat the crap out of them and have a whole lot of fun. As far as that bike, I don't know. We might sell it, might keep it. It's a 2002 XR50, stock 50cc. It's got the same suspension. This is, you know, CRF 50 style plastics, 50 caliber swing arm, Piranha wheels, Pirelli Scorpion tires. It's got pretty much the same stuff that bike has, but hasn't been torn apart and completely gone through and the motor's still stock for the most part um one thing on both bikes is they do have the hd rear brake uh lever that's like a must have the stock brake lever bends extremely easy if you lay it over so that you know beefy brake lever don't have to worry about that bending anymore if it does that means you rode it pretty good um, new OEM spring just to make it look good, nice and shiny. But yeah, overall, that's the you know pride and joy bike that I built. Probably never gonna get rid of it. Can't guarantee that, but they are fun. If you like dirt bikes or hitting trails, going to races, pit bikes to just drive around the pits. These bikes do it pretty good you get the 88 cc on there then you got a handful but it's a lot it's fun so yeah just let me know what you think of the bike uh, if you have any questions on the build if i forget anything let me know down in the comments um like i said on this xr50 here i don't know what we're doing with it yet so no guarantees if i do anything it'll probably be a t-bolt just a, a basic 88 cc kit no race head no race cam uh, nothing crazy on it just need it to have a little more power to keep up with the other ones um so it's if we keep it my wife's probably gonna ride it she wants to try to ride she's never ridden a dirt bike before so i think starting on the 50 like stock 50 would be great so we'll let her try it out see if she likes it if not i really want to get a shifter cart you know 250 cc two stroke uh, six speed shifter cart and have fun with one of those i haven't haven't ever had one always watched races with them and i would love to give it a try but we'll see there's a whole lot going on in the the future for the channel so yeah if you got any questions comment down below let me know what you think uh, i will try to link all the parts in the description and uh yeah like the video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't like it and uh feel free to subscribe thanks for watching peace